Rocky loves Draven. Up. TES know where they need to contest the series. If you look back when these teams played in the regular season, you know, BLG came on ahead, but Tez won a game, and it was all about just denying them in the bot lane 2v2, and they're looking to do it again. An almost 70% win rate over 30 plus games for Jackie Love on the Draven. He whips it out when he wants to take dominance in lane. And we'll see if he can do that yet again. I love that Talia lock in as well, trying to deny some of the spacing available and lock down some of that spacing. The Vi, pretty big to lock down the Draven though. Yeah, now for BLG, I wonder if they go for something like a, a Renata early or again with, with all the uh, all the things you can kind of put in that support role nowadays to look for the aggressive 2v2 look wow. elsewhere. They do decide to go for the Rek'Sai top side. We've really seen the Pryo and Rek'Sai just go up throughout playoffs. I mean, it makes sense. Really strong in the early game. Obviously can sustain through pretty much anything with that passive healing. And now Tez, it seems like they're just leaning into a lot of signature picks for their side with the hover on the lease in. It would fit Tien to a T. They're going to lock in the top side matchup here. And I was going to bring up a conversation about the Rek'Sai side because it doesn't feel like we've seen a true answer to go through the Rek'Sai. It feels like you just have to kind of buy your time and then have bigger team fight implication. Well, that is the answer right now for top esports as they take the Ornn. We've seen 369 handle this very well in recency as well into the Rek'Sai. I mean, right? We had we had the bit starting off the broadcast where Trouble just absolutely beating up Nymera. But hey, <laughs> young, you know, you, you gotta respect 369 if there's oh, anyone. Yeah. I mean, what, one of the best top laners in the world right now and has been for, you know, at the very least the last year and hell maybe even two years before that have been ben's on the other side i, I said one of the best so we're not <laughs> we're not here to be biased or pick favorites but it seems like tez <laughs> gonna focus on taking away the renata so i think a, a, you have to. a pretty good call from them especially when you're leaning so heavily into wanting to commit four all in with with a draven and norn right so now for tez i mean they were showing jungler earlier on the lee sin still being open i think it makes sense very strong mid jungle 2v2 and can lean even better into playing around for that bot side they also just get a little bit of counteractive scaling to their early game presence still really love this lee sin pick for tian uh, again i just feel like this guy has had some insane pathing throughout the last two years but he's just so big brain in that factor i like a little bit of the tools being taken away from top esports we get the camille baby it's the camille callista <laughs> it's gonna be crazy ben going back on to his signature pick i mean you know the solo qid for years i don't know if it still is but yep. love camille being there and now i mean the oriana something we've already seen from night so far in playoffs TS do have a composition that, that can go to Distro Trade, having that front line of the Orn, having those upgraded Orn items. So I like leaning into something like this to maybe round out your damage profile a bit better as the game goes on. And a ton of duos to, to throw that shockwave on top of like three members of BLG that can just jump straight into that back line. So the Thresh may be a good shout. Uh, having the Lantern to be able to escape yeah. again all the ways that BLG are going to be able to dive right on top of you. They also just have so much peelability for the Draven. I think you're going to really be wanting that. That ball delivery system is going to be delivered straight to the doorstep, and uh, it's going to be really difficult to deal with. But honestly, really love it. We get a game number one, Camille for on. I checked through his history. It is the first time competitively. I know you said uh, in solo queue that was his solo queue name. He loved it. But uh, it's going to be interesting how they execute that into a very proficient Jackie Love and Mako, world champions for top esports. You know, Mazel, I saw the Camille. I thought Ben, you know, we're having a bit of tech issues, but like you're saying, it is four on. So sadly, not going to be able to see that one up in top side. But yeah, this is going to put so, so much threat onto Jackie Love in the 2v2. It's really going to rely it's hard. up to Mako, up to that lantern, and, and really being able to get things settled. And honestly, it. It does feel like a situation, I want to pick your brain a little bit, where BLG definitely need to be proactive. Uh, the Callista, uh, obviously another kind of early game pick with the Draven to try to get the snowballs going, but it definitely feels like with the Orn, they have some counterbalancing on top esports and BLG need momentum. Yeah, B BLG really need to get their front foot forward. Uh, with finding that level of aggression, right? The Rek'Sai, the Callista, the Camille. Again, you have Yoriana to lean on, but still, I feel like there'll just be too much frontline later on 
and pretty much all of your moves have to be around that that 2v2. So BLG, at least compositionally, himself really lent into those strengths. Oh, I've been waiting so long for this. It's a banger best of five kicking off for a ticket to MSI and a ticket to our finals. Let's hear those GIOs for BLG versus Top Esports. Love to hear the crowd in tune. Also love to see the top esports want to go for a level one here. I think rightfully so. They have pretty strong composition at the level one mark. They will not spot out any BLG members though. Yeah, just completely wrapping their way around. <laughs> really being on the hunt to see if they were going to be able to run into anyone and hoping that they could start on the front foot. Luckily for BLG, no one getting caught out. They're actually more worried about an invade <laughs> coming out the top side. Friends strong together. And uh, we just walk around the rift together, holding hands, making sure that everybody is okay. Uh, they will not actually get any warding spotted out here. So no, I guess, early advantages. But we do get to lading phase, which is a little bit of fun. And uh, opposite side starts for both junglers. Yeah, and again, everything going to be about how they do here. I mean, wanting to start up towards that top side for Tien, making a lot of sense. I'm curious to see what Shun does. Probably gonna make his way top and try and wrap back around to be able to enable this Camille, especially the double hail of blades, the ignite. Really signaling their intentions. And for Elkin on, again, they've had a really good split. I feel like on especially is someone who, you think back to those Sooning days when he started out with, I mean, the meme was that he was consistently off, right? Wasn't being able to show up, but now being one of the premier supports in the league is just such a huge testament to that growth as he goes in. And we're about to see them go ham on a Jackie Love. He's very low, does end up getting out. Couple summoner spells burn. More importantly, the flash for Jackie Love is gone and Elk and On still have theirs. So gonna be able to come off with an advantage. The, sadly, the Draven not gonna be enabled early. BLG though, it's gonna be how much they can run this forward and especially getting that plate gold. Onto Elk's gonna be huge. Maybe even being set up now for Shun to look for an invade into that side of the jungle. And I love that you bring up the uh, the on point because Elk, I feel like also has had a bit of a weird story. They call him the husband, right, of BLG, but I think it, it was a lot of time on Team WE, a lot of time on Ultra Prime that didn't feel too successful, even though he felt like one of the better members of those squads. Uh, I, I think it really has been a nice combination between him and, and on and the kind of cohesion they have in the way they want to play the game. I mean, yeah, they, they really just have been able to figure out those details and timings of being able to, to go in, take away these camps. Does have on waiting in the wings, so Tien has to be careful, but with Mako being nearby, it doesn't seem like anything should really be possible at jungle, but that's not the case with mid. Oh, Hookshot going to come out. Doesn't want to get stunned up by Cream there. And uh, yeah, I, I just wonder now with a little bit of the mobility, I know it was a conversation we had before coming into this one, but also a lot of the point of presence for BLG was on getting mobile, getting on the map with Shun, but also some of that connection happening earlier rather than later. And kind of the same for top esports. Yeah, and I think a lot of it is gonna be just directed into jungle if they do transition it out of lane. There's some opportunity to look mid like we just saw, especially post six that's going to be there because on can just be that perfect ball delivery system to try to take down cream. But I think really being able to limit TN's mobility. Uh, they really try to dive here to be uh, a little bit ham. They do end up getting the control ward though. They have, I mean, they have a massive wave being able to show through right now. Some trades are already there. They're gonna, they're gonna look to do it. Oh, I like it. They're gonna put the ward down just as an escape plan. Here comes everything for Mako. He's gonna try sacrifice his life. First blood going over to BLG, and they might just get it fully turned around on. You cannot come up against this bot lane, and they will completely turn it on Top's head. And everything going over to the Camille on is gonna be so powerful. Maybe not. I, you know, ideally what you would hope for, but now you're going to have this Camille roaming around the map oh, assisting yeah. his other lanes, just being able to cause complete chaos. Man, how how disappointing for TS. Why go? This is so dicey to go for, though. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of the reasons, right? Seeing so many heavy trades have to come out before these plays go in, getting locked down by on with E very early on. The flash was nice by Elk to make sure that he buys enough space between them. Just... DS really coming out of that one. Uh, wishing they would have done Usually, it a little bit differently. 
Usually you're like, you see these cheese picks, you're like, okay, as long as it doesn't get kills, it's fine. Like, it'll be all right. It's a weird pick. It'll be fine. You look down at five minutes and there's two kills on the uh, the Camille support. You're like, oh, that's how this is going to go. But the biggest thing we set up coming into this was the early game for both these two teams. But what I want to see is execution. So now that BLG have this advantage, utilize it and do have that chokehold that we've been talking about so strongly for both these teams. I mean, they're one of the best teams at being able to use it. I mean, hell, you you look at the, the games where they really dominated Nip and they were getting all the grubs. They were getting yep. every Drake. Uh, not going to be able to do that this time, which again kind of tells to the proficiency of, of, of TES not giving over objectives for free. We can see TN doing those grubs on top, but for BLG, going to start off this Drake nice and early. It's what you love to see when you have that Callista on the Rift. So already making sure that, that they're getting the momentum going forward. Momentum is key, especially against two of our uh, strongest pressuring teams. We did get the three grubs for top esports and the dragon slowly but surely. Oh, on. Oh, on. You're taking tower shots, bud. And that one goes through even after the hook shot. It is Mako that gets it, so no cash in for Jackie Love. So, though, Jackie Love and Mako, a welcomed reprieve for them to not just have to keep worrying about getting pressured under turret, or do they? Shun's sneaking in. He is. He's got a sneaky, sneaky snake. Oh, he tries to go flash. Nice move from Mako. That sentence as well. Bring his Shun back in. Now Jackie Love wants to move forward. He's got it. He's going to cash in and look at all that cha-ching. He's going to get his heart ripped out of him by Elk, but it's worth it. So finally gets the cash in. But like like you're saying, still goes down. He's going to lose a bit of CS and uh, allow Elk to, to start getting momentum. We can see now Sheen and, and Warhammer picked up. So going to come back with a nice bit of damage to this lane. now we actually get Tian spotted out on a control word moving down towards bottom side we'll just be trying to clear out his side of the rift itself and i think this is a, a position where we had blg strike early but we saw that there there are punching gloves right on the other side for top esports and they're not afraid to fight back no we're gonna get to see exactly how it went down shouldn't going for it but great play from mako tries to follow through with the flash isn't able to get it and then right into the hook just allowing jackie love to be able to get that gold 235 he's gonna absolutely love that it's so big especially with the first one you know whenever <laughs> get some love there got the whirling death now available level six is there cream needing to be proactive i think that's the next step in the right direction for top esports is not only now having make out on the map but have cream be proactive as as well to try to combat blg yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to, to see how it happens, right? Because BLG definitely having more threat in bot right now, so that's where we're seeing on able to lean towards mid. For TS, it's gonna have to be the opposite of where you're having Ben. They do actually catch him out here, even with that sense. Oh, Ben, he gets a nice little heal here as well as double knock up. They already got a lot of the CC chain there. Void rush gonna be used, but it goes the other way, and that will be a dead wreck side. Tian picks up the kill. Tian clearly like. A feeling, hey, not too many options around bot lane. Let's look for Ben being this far uh, extended in the lane, having the call of the Forge God there. So at least you can start getting your, your tank, you know, a little bit tankier on that side. But it's really opening up this this bottom quadrant of the jungle completely for BLG. Even look at the minimap, Knight zoning Cream away from being able to get any information here. They are just getting so many plates down here for Elk as well. I think that's so huge. And I do wonder, okay, okay, there's the flash out of the uh, prior play. So that's why he wasn't really able to find an exit there. We are getting more bodies down bot side and a 3v3 is brewing Lyric. Just denying this vision for now. I wonder, I wonder if Dan would actually be confident in committing because again, look, Knight is doing a great job of making sure that Cream can't really move forward. Neither mid laner has that much mana hook. Oh, they actually get him it on. He gets Fates called to his safety. And that's the combination that you love to see. Yeah, great to be able to get out of there. It looked like he was down for sure, but you know who it's not great for is TS because that looked like a kill that they, they'd worked for, they'd earned, found the hook, but not able to convert it. But it's been very back and forth so far in this 2v2, despite, you know, seeing BLG find kills earlier, Top Esports able to answer one back. Uh, look at the CS, staying completely yep. even. The only real disparity is being in the, in the solo lanes for BLG, and it's allowing them to have that, that very slight lead in the gold.
You know, I'm very proud of our uh, 10 players here. They were very gentlemanly, uh, very astute. They traded those uh, early objectives. This next one, I, you know, I, I thought maybe it's not going to be traded as easily. Right now, Shun has already started the Telegrubby episode, and Tian is a little bit behind the play. I don't know if he can actually contest this one just yet. Now we're going to see if they end up looking for it. I mean, already moving everyone over. Cream TP is there, and he has a Weaver's Wall. So they could very quickly equalize these numbers. Looks like they're going to wrap around. They're going to move in. So they'll deny the third here. <laughs> Shouldn't deciding. Uh, maybe I shouldn't stick around. So top esports move in. They will not get the mites. They will get four of the grubs, though. So do manage to walk away with that, denying just a little bit. I mean, I guess it wouldn't have been the end of the world even if they got all three, right? TS uh, really only able to commit to that play because Tian already coming off the reset, being up towards that side of the map. But now it's going to be about Dragon. 13 seconds till that one goes. Elk has stayed in bot, so they have Pryo to be able to follow through with. But the thing we're going to have to start paying attention to is the potential dives with oh, On being yeah. level six and having access to that ulti. Got to get as many dives as possible. We said uh, in the draft and coming out of it that BLG want to stay as proactive as possible. There are some serious scaling elements on top esports, especially with the Ornn helping out in that regard. But uh, BLG want to put the pedal to the metal and don't stop. Act like that gas pedal is broken. They will take that second dragon. So they get on the other side. They contest for the two mites and they will get their second dragon in a row. So it sets them up for some good decision making later on. And so far, a bit of a similar feel, again, to, to how the NIP series went, where it, BLG have definitely felt like the ones in control of what's, you know, the big plays happening on the map. Is might need to pause on that point because they want to That's go for Kareem. That's a long-range hook shot. He tries to go for the flash play, but can't get it. Kareem is still in trouble. Seismic shove does go wide, and here comes that hex tech, and it's a bit ultimatum-y. He does end up going down on the back end, and also Tien catches out Knight. And top esports are the ones that come out the better of that play. Yeah, yeah, they somehow walk away the winners. Absolutely crazy. Like being able to turn that one around, Divine Sunder and Pocket having the damage just absolutely take Knight out. But Bin being able to find a lot of free time up with this top lane turret. That's another important thing to factor in. They've gotten three plates on both top and bot for BLG. They will lose a lot of that advantage now, but. Soon and on, heading up here. Oh, Elk might have baited them in, though. That's and it's going to be flashed out of. Top Esports backing away as they get a play two on. Not going to be able to find the hook shot there. They do lose a lot of gold over to Jackie Love, who's slowly and surely getting ridiculously strong, especially on that Essence Reaver spike he has. I mean, you just pointed out the amount, you know, the plates down for BLG in that bot side, but Tez answering right back with the same amount, really valuing. Uh, the control over this pixel brush and river and especially the tri brushes to be able to force these aggressive plays Shun's nowhere near so yeah. Tez can keep going with this. He will spot out Tien. Elk has Fate's call gonna burn the heal just in case Not gonna pop it just yet. They are bringing down cream weaver's wall coming in on gonna sacrifice his life gets shoved into the wall and cream picks up the kill Look at the opposite side of the map, 369 recalling at the same time. So really nice map play, play by TS overall, not allowing for a dive to happen on top side while wow. creating one in the bot lane. Now going to be able to finish this turret up like, and guess yeah, what? really, really nice map movements. That brings up a huge point that we'll talk about after this replay here. I'll, I'll save the surprise. And this, I mean, this was just absolutely full sending it to make sure that cream goes down. Luckily for Kareem, oh, able to Knight. stall out of time, but there it is. Knight getting exposed. Yeah, just finding the perfect secret agent angle to get in there. Caught watching, caught watching. Uh, top esports have been absolutely dominant in one thing, and that's their first turret win percentage, as it has been insane that in the LPL, with all these games played all the way through playoffs, they have a 100% first tower win percentage for top esports. Again, when they find a lead, they are able to hold on, but now we've got to keep our eyes on this fight for Harold. 369 does have call of the Forge God to try and... Tien, he steals those he just all steals day it. long! He's a world champion for a reason! Jackie Love himself a world champion gets taken out. Fate's call is prepped on to Cream. On goes. They get two there for Knight here as well. The fighting is starting to kick off and BLG that's their comfort zone. They take down multiple members of top esports and they claw their lead right back. BLG are going to be so happy that that Tez just run in. I thought there'd be a bit more posturing there, trying to help your Orn get involved. He was getting uh, zoned off by the Rek'Sai. 
But no, they just sit in there and my God, they're going for more. They are. We get the double beams up top. The tower is just falling right now. It's 369. Going to pop that Orn Horn. College Forge got going to land with the seismic stuff as well. The double combo. Whirling Death not going to hit enough damage there. Cream gets taken out by Ben in a double kill for the Rek'Sai. So decisive at being able to find these moments. Cream trying to save his top laner, but just ends up being an even bigger feast of gold. Ooh. More fighting. More fighting. Find more him. fighting. Uh, gets away. I didn't get my wish, Lear. But man, we've gotten a lot of it. It is nine to six. And what else could we expect from our two best early game teams in the league? TN gets those all day long. Yeah, it goes in for the steal, but it opens them up to be engaged on. Uh, leaving there, their duo lane just completely exposed. Love that BLG just pulled the trigger right on the moment. And trying to get one back, sadly not able to connect with the Sonic Wave there, but... You know what? He got the steal. He got the steal. That's all that matters. We're not going to highlight that he's missed a couple of those ones so far. Uh, BLG, they will end up taking a response in the bot side. They will even up those turrets, at least take advantage in the turrets as a three over them to them. As well as the uh, most important factor is now top esports don't really have a base to leap off of into this dragon pit. Yeah, it's going to be really hard, uh, which, which is how much of the map now is open for BLG to be able to, to, to you know, force down mid, walk into either quadrant in the jungle, get the vision that they want. So for Tez, it's going to be about trying to be a little bit cheeky with, with finding the picks with the to lead the lease in. Though we have seen many times this game, right, where TS just allowed BLG to go for their play, uh, waited, looked for the counter gank or the counter play, and were able to come out ahead. We'll see if they can keep up with that. Going for the trade on top side now, but it does just give BLG sole point. And in a matchup where when one team gets ahead, they can absolutely control the map. I think giving those decision-making tools to BLG can be very scary. But top esports are feeling like their compositional strengths are going to start coming online in time to fight that one. They might try to catch out on here. They do. He's going to hook shot in the wall. Goes with the Hextech ultimatum into the phase call. How are you so invulnerable, bro? Elf gets his shield popped there. Jackie oh. Love getting down by Sue, but soon oh. knocked back, and Jackie Love stands the test of time. I can't believe he was able to survive that kiting it out, having his team next to him to help him get through, and even getting a kill for their troubles. It really isn't going to mean much in the grand scheme of things, right? There, there's nothing they could turn it into. But still, you know what? You'll take every dub you can get. You absolutely will. I love how close it was and how tight knit that situation was. But the fact that top esports come out, the better of it is huge. They actually initially started this by getting on, caught out. Yeah, trying to get on top of him, uh, following it through with the Lee Sin. But quickly, he's turned on. It's like, hey, we really can't follow this up. They think there's an angle there for Jackie Love. But again, I'm just amazed. Has the movement speed there. Really nice displacement to be able to keep him going. And then the ignite stops sticking right when it's just about to finally go down in the end. We are now on second item spike for Elk, as we talked about uh, earlier. And now we'll see if Jackie Loves is getting a little closer to that. But that is where I want to start bringing up the conversation of how these teams find success in these next fights. BLG have not gotten the the big lead that we maybe were looking for them to have with this competition, but they have an advantage. They have a lead and they have that decision-making power. Top Esports, they've been trying to get these second items, trying to get these third items, trying to have a little bit more say in the damage potential. I mean, for BLG, right, it's about being able to find easy access to the back line. That's what you have the Vi and Camille to be able to do to set up for your Oriana. So whether it's like last time where they're getting on objectives first and setting those trap plays and, and brushes behind, or ooh, they actually oh, hook themselves. Or catching out on, who misses his hook shot there and might just be dead to rights because of it. Oh, Whirling Death goes the other way. Zon makes it out with a heal from Elk. I think for TS, we're just we're just waiting for a point where they'll actually be able to get a solid 5v5. You know, and 369 can, can really get involved. You actually have more peel and more CC in the equation to try to make sure that Jackie Love and Cream don't just get taken down by the combo. The 369 might need to worry about himself, okay? Won't, won't have to this <laughs> time, but yeah. Maybe going forward, us to be a little bit conscious about the combo. He's I guess he wouldn't have to care up that there. much. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no. let's let's be real. If 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 Vi and Rex had tried to run him down, he'd probably still be fine. <laughs> probably still be fine. Somebody check his dice. 
Uh, <laughs> I think there's a bunch of nines on there and no other numbers. Uh, Jackie Love has completed his IE. That's a big power spike for the Draven. Uh, and I, I do wonder if that's going to be enough for them to be willing to fight over this next Dragon BLG. They have very much played their cards. They are hovering so consistently around this bot side. They're using pressure in mid. They want to force an early Elder Dragon. Yeah, no, I, I, well, I think for Taz, I mean, you said, hey, is this going to be enough for them to fight? I think it has to be, right? Like, <laughs> you really don't have many more chances than this next rate coming up. Like, sure, they could try and pivot towards top, maybe trade for Baron and just, like, hope to smash the game in that, you know, like, quick uh, succession where they have it. But at the same time, that would be, that would be crazy. <laughs> that would not be able to go down. So, yeah, yeah having the IE in pocket now going to make him a bit stronger. Uh, you have a bit more time for 369, you know, answer just that last wave. You can go for the recall and even start pathing down now. We got a minute till Fight Fest here. That is an item upgraded and completed for 369 on his back. Coming out, we have TPs available to get to this one. It's important to see if they're going to get full resets off. Looks like Top Esports do want to commit to that. And we'll take a second here to think a little bit about what we thought about these teams coming into this one. It was all bot lane focus here. We did definitely have early bot game focus. But it feels like the true full game carries are going to be maybe the mid laners here. Oh, and we'll see Jackie. if Nike can get some resources here. Jackie Love completely caught out. And you can't be that far extended right when a big fight's coming out. That is 24 seconds for a dragon and a 4v5 for top esports. Yeah, he, he gives up his life still. I don't know if they could have ever walked anywhere near, though. His ooh on. Just going to get pulled to safety. But right, even if Jackula wasn't there, Jackula actually didn't have flash. So I don't think yeah. Fez mm -hmm. could have really safely contested the Drake regardless. But hell, now definitely going to be hard. But still, they're going to posture for it. I warned everybody coming to this one that you got to be careful. These guys, they're quick decision making. You'll blink and you'll miss it. Top Esports trying to make the steal, trying to get Tien in there. He's done it once before. Can he do it again? He's not going to take it. And it's going to be BLG that secure their Cloud Soul. And they'll move out as TS are fighting back. Jackie Love is coming out of base right now. BLG realized they don't need to take this fight. They got what they came for. Yeah, they back off. Creams, Leandres did just get upgraded by 369. So you're gonna have a little bit more damage under their belt. And I love this. Work your way up towards top side. You know you already have tempo moving towards this objective because they just took drag in. And let's see if they have the confidence to try and outright beta fight. One of the most important factors from top esports has been finding those quick baron starts and forcing the decisions of the enemy opponent to kind of come towards them in that way. They might not be able to take the Baron right now, but they can force that decision making. And I think between these two teams, that is the most important factor to kind of keep an eye on going out through this best of five. I'm actually surprised that they weren't more confident just for the fact that, you know, BLG used some ults uh, in, in the previous pick of Jackie Love. So we can see now on Hextech Ultimatum just came up. Elk still not being available. So that could have been a small window where the turn was there. Oh, but now they're going to engage him. But not again. He has flash this time. It is enough to get him out. But that's a five minute cooldown. God, Ocean. Oh, 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 the void rush from the depths. It's top esports being taken out from the inside out. BLG. They strike on Jackie Love. Here comes 369's Orn Horn. He's not going to get on in the end because of the hook shot. And On has been insane with these mechanics so far. And BLG ain't stopping anytime soon. Round one in this boxing match. And Top Esports have the bloodiest lift. That's a beautiful four-man kickback from Tien. But it's saving grace and nothing but little scrap for Top Esports. As they are run down in their own jungle. They took the fight to BLG. And BLG fought right as hard. Yeah, BLG dominating TS in that fight and like you said a lot of it being started by on this man is a space creating monster in the split never afraid of going forward so they're gonna look for this <laughs> three six nine dude he does so much damage dissuade. whirling death oh not gonna do it but the baron doing a lot of damage he is tanky oh, he's getting one shot by the baron right now here comes jack love he wants to clean up but he doesn't have any tools to get there blg they try to take a confident baron but they do back off Still, though, they're going to be happy with what they got in that fight, right? Take, taking down four members of TES, 14 day air now kills. They've, they've had soul. They're up 3K, like really just running the map. Even if we, we take a look at the minimap and just where wards are placed, right? It's it's BLG 
the ones being able to take aggressive vision. But like you said here, we see the engage come out from Bin, and then everyone just being uh, willing to follow it up gets the ult to be able to follow through on Jackie Love. Now having the numbers advantage there, like where do you even go yeah. as TS? I think it's so difficult too because you don't have consistent damage right now especially without jackie love there and so you're really relying on cream of all people here who were you talking up so heavily but to be honest you know talia might not be the biggest cream champion here and i think lacking some of that consistent damage has really just, come to hurt tlp sports but it's just so hard right to, to like it's hard yeah right being either the talia or the draven in this comp when when again, uh, Hextech ultimatum with Shockwave or the Violet or, or Rek'Sai, like so many things you have to worry about. And sadly for TS, those openings have always been there. Usually when one other member is is, is catching a wave off on some yeah. other side of the map and, and BLG just overwhelm and burst someone out so quickly. So now they're gonna keep this game up, playing towards that top side because we are still a few minutes away from Elder coming on board. But BLG are not stopping. They're, com they're completely trying to deny any bit of gold from TS. That's what we said, both these teams, when they get leads, they choke you out. They find control around the map and they will not stop fighting. That's why we called it a boxing match. And so far, BLG are running circles around top esports and they're almost at a 4,000 goal lead. Top esports not one to shy away from some team fights and some good execution though. See if they have any hope left like, to give. A big setup from Cream could be big. I feel like the problem is, once again, we, we take a look at Summoner's Night and Elcat flashes. Oh, look yeah. at that, Cream and Jakulov, they do not. Like, it's, it's gonna be so hard, Jakulov. You gotta try to force it. We're gonna see how comfortable he's moving he's forward. Been, he's been in this position before. But look it on. If he gets it again. Yeah, he wants that flag. My goodness. Mako not gonna find him out just yet. They want Jackie Love. He wants to go over the wall there. Flash coming out there. That will be important because Mako not gonna have any tools out or engage. And that is BLG pushing top esports off of the mid lane. And they're going to force them around Baron because we have a minute until Elder Dragon. So they are just keeping them on the rift for as long as possible. Yeah, they're just going to keep going. Oh, hook on to Ben. That's a big catch out. Okay, Ben is Rek'Sai, though. We have to realize it's a lot like Udyr when he was very strong. <laughs> Can't get baited as uh, top esports are rebuffed. Still, though, again, three items on Elk is just so terrifying. Uh, also, just being able to, to pull on to safety, throw on in more and more with that Axiom arc. They do end up being able to get, get some kills under their belt. Now, the pivot to bot side does begin. 40 seconds until Elder. This is where the last stand has to come through. We'll see if the Lord Doms will be able to be finished up by Jackie on this back. It is a situation though, and I wanna maybe get your thoughts on it as well, is like if it was a sustained like late game hyper carry, it would be a much different world, but top esports opted in to taking the Fistica fight into the Callista with the Draven. I think maybe wanting to think that one through for a, another game, but BLG want to keep. I think it would have been worse. Up. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I don't. I don't think either of these teams should really lean into scaling or, or just <laughs> in, in bot lane. Like you can't afford to do it up against the opposite bot lane. Again, the bigger problem is just that that lack of mobility and the amount of threat being there for BLG. Now they're gonna have to walk in blind once again. Esports there hesitantly positioning around the top side of the map. BLG are just waiting for them to come in. Ben has a flank, but is spotted out by the ward. He's still gonna look for an angle there. Nice seismic shove onto on, gets him about half health. Fate's call does get popped though. BLG taken out of this mid lane fight, but they will reposition around the elder. And this is good because for Tez, it'd be a lot ben more beneficial to have a fight in the lane where, where there's a lot less areas you have to worry about being flanked, right? You can you can see the enemy in front of you. But BLG going into river, I mean, look, look at all these angles they're now challenging with look on, at on wrapping around. They have no idea, and Jackie Love's on this side of the fight. Now they realize something's going up. Flash play from Finn, and that's the Shockwave delivery combo, baby! We got that Orn Horn that's trying to deal a little bit appealing. They have the death sentence too, but Cream is next to go down. A double kill, they should. Now Tien's trying to get one back. He misses the Sonic Wave for another time, and he'll just bite the dirt too. BLG, they take three, and they lose nothing. It's an Elder Dragon to boot. I mean, this is going to be BLG's game. It, it must be impossible for them to lose at this point. They're winning every single team fight. Have Soul now going to have an Elder on top of it. And again, it's, it's been beautiful, patient, find the right angles, and then just so fast on pulling that trigger. They got advantages for Elk early. Knight has slowly and surely become a menace on this Oriana. We got to see how it all pulled off. Ben with the flash play here. 
these these guys definitely having the degree from the full send university i absolutely what did love jackie it. love do to these guys man <laughs> He existed. He picked, picked an immobile, AD carry, and then they just got torn to shreds on. Yeah. You know, gonna be able to get that proc uh, off, and once again, Tien not being able to land a lot of these Sonic Waves. I mean, at this point, with where we're at, with the Drakes, with the Soul, <laughs> it didn't get any easier. And now coming back onto the Rift with the Baron, I mean, this should be the push for the end, right? This is where BLG really have the strength to not only just, just make top esports space crumble, but also force that game-winning fight. It feels like they're right on the edge of taking a clean game number one and gave some tussles early it was like 15 kills 10 minutes in the game but they have honed that aggression into absolute dominance so far they still got to put the tying knots on this one and top esports not one to give up a fight they are heavily down as we actually take a look here oh <laughs> the whirling death interesting okay <laughs> they're trying out. to just see yeah, feeling feeling the need to uh, use that ult just in case. But now, like we said, right, Baron and Elder, BLG, this should just be a free ride for them. They still have to be a little bit cautious, right? Because they go for a dive, maybe 369 it, and Mako can buy enough time to where it does get a bit dicey. But even then, I I don't know. And you can see BLG not scared whatsoever. They're just going to move up and crash the base. This is where they are strongest. They don't want to give any more time for scaling for top esports. Yes, actually going to be left alone a little bit. They will transition towards mid lane, try to take even more. Uh, now, actually, they just have another minute and a half on this, so they can take another inhib there. Top side is not necessarily the easiest to break open. They could just force it. Yeah, and we, we can see, right, second inhib down. They're just going to keep moving forward. They still have that Elder for just, just 15 more seconds. They're hoping they can find some value out of it, but it seems like Tez are saying no. We are not going to give you the opportunity to fight us. Take whatever you want in our base. Oh, Ooh, big shockwave. That Elder Dragon can do some work there. It will end up going down now, though. They still have Baron for another minute. They finally got their waves in a good place, but it is still trying to pressure these Nexus turrets. I feel like they might realize they're overextending a little bit. <laughs> BLG, they'll move back towards top side. So it's just one at a time. Go bot, go mid, go top. I mean, right, had on Shunner Bin been a little bit closer when that shockwave came through, you know, they would have sprinted in and made the fight happen, but no one near. So just have to accept what they have for now. They do still have Baron for another 35 seconds. And with all these supers coming in, I like it, right? You, you have your, your very mobile Camille off playing that side alone. He can easily escape if they try to all in on his side and allow the rest to just keep bearing up, bearing up those minions towards top and finally breaking down this top inhibitor turret. Good try. I mean, they have about 15 seconds left on that uh, Baron buff here, but they'll be able to do it. So one at a time, the structures fall, and one at a time, top esports are put back against the wall. One more engage here from Mako. Maybe the difference. Oh my God! Oh my night. God! He does so much damage, man. This is game number one, holistically going to BLG, and we're just watching them put top esports in a body bag here. Maybe not, though, actually. On comes in now, has a little bit of damage reprieve. They're going to try to re-engage on Jackie Love. Triple knock up there as well from 369. They're still trying to fight it, though, and Elk is still kicking. Ben is still kicking, and what 369 is, he is defending the base. One Nexus Tower falls, and top esports pull out a defense of a lifetime. They managed to make it work. I think it was Mako finding a hook on the night, and the night ended up going down, which is what really led the game to, to continue. But at the same time, that was a complete mess for both sides. But a mess BLG are going to be happy with because, again, look, <laughs> look at top esports. You makes. like messes? That's that's what they made a mess of. That's not theirs. It's like when you know you have a kid and they make like a beautiful mess by throwing Legos and Play-Doh no, and stuff all like, over the floor, and, it's, and like, it's like, oh look, it's a mess, and you're like, oh yay! Good it's job. like if you ever invited me over to your house, I would throw a huge house party without telling you make it a mess, <laughs> and then I would leave being super happy, and that's BLG right now. That was Honestly, their house party. as long as party. I get invited, I'm down. <laughs> oh, you know what? Hey, Tez, Tez were invited, right? They were there for that dance in their base, but... Oh, they shouldn't have accepted that invite. I'm just telling them right now. I don't know what happened. Mizzell, but, Mizzell uh... the problem is we're up for round two. BLG are already back on the map. TP's coming out. And now, I mean, look at all these supers. They have the ability to try to look for the end. 
Cream is coming down from top side after having pushed that one out a little bit, but you have the double super coming in every wave. It's going to be very hard to defend in top esports on their last gasps for this game. Number one, they put up a hell of a fight, but we said once one of these teams gets a chokehold, it does not stop, and BLG representing that one in kind. You just got to find the push, finishing touches, rather on top esports as 369 still very tanky a lot of tank it is oh tian oh, oh tian oh tian oh no and they go out of the back line here now too jackie love is the focus but they can't get him down elk just takes down tian with the help of knight bim is almost dead 369 gonna pop that call the forge god they try to get jackie love on the back but he has so much damage potential and so much peel potential of them and the last nexus tower does end up falling they're gonna go for jackie love one more time they get the double knock up from 369 but it's not enough blg all members strong will take down top esports in game number one off the back of a camille bot side pick and what a way to kick off this best of on an absolutely bloodthirsty animal. Great performance by him. Been really showing up like across the board. Uh, the engage was there from BLG and they want to get this win. They want to go back to MSI and it looked good in that first game. Yeah, it did. Again, winner of this series gets our first ticket to MSI, but also the first ticket